I'm Noelle Nielsen with The Hungry Minnesotan, and today we're gonna check out Surly Brewing Co. in Minneapolis. We're sitting here with Ben Smith, head brewer from The Surly Brewing Company. Thanks for letting us come in and yeah, thanks for get a me. look at what you guys do here. Why don't you tell me a little bit about what your role here is at Surly? Yeah, so I manage kind of day-to-day -day wort production at both facilities, uh, where it's the kind of the sugar water that ferments into beer. Uh, I'm also managing all of our creative processes, so recipe development. I work with our marketing and sales team, working on a lot of R&D beers at our original location in Brooklyn Center, and then scaling them up to our large facility here in Prospect Park for release to market. Okay, so Brooklyn Center is kind of like where it all, the, the testing of the recipes happens? Correct, so that, that, that was our original brewery, so about 14 years ago that started pumping out beers. So originally that's where Furious Bender and all the uh, original Surly beers came out. Uh, we built this uh, facility and opened in 2014 and that allowed us to focus on mass scale production of those brands like uh, Furious Hell, Extra Sitcha, uh, and now a few others. So. Brooklyn Center is now more of kind of the area where we're developing new recipes uh, and then eventually some of those beers may bring it over here. But uh, if you come to the beer hall, you'll see a good example of both. It's the secret place. That's why they didn't let us in. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Yeah, <laughs> so we, we don't have a tap room by Minnesota Law. We can just have one. Sure. So the destination brewery is where people come to drink beer. Yeah. And the Brooklyn Center is more of the factory setting where we're kind of tinkering and coming up with new recipes. Minnesota is quickly becoming one of the fastest growing locations for breweries and craft brew, but Surly has been around for how long? Uh, it'll be 14 years this year. For a long time, one of the staples here in the community. And how long have you been with Surly? Uh, almost seven years at this point, which seems like an eternity, but it's been yeah. fun. It's kind of, I think when I started we had 20 employees and now we have uh, almost 400. So wow. uh, it's come a long ways. It's crazy. Yeah. And would you say that the beer is being distributed around the country or where, where yeah, do you Yeah, I believe we're, we're in 10 or 11 states okay. uh, currently, um, which is it was quite a bit. Most of our beer is still sold here in the Twin Cities though. And with as fast as the industry is gro growing, how do you guys stay innovative with your recipes? It's a great question. Uh, the market today has changed quite a bit since I started brewing. Um, folks are really focused on what's new, uh, what's exciting. Um, so we're always trying to come up with new recipes and new brands to kind of keep it fresh and uh, competitive with the rest of the market. And that's really where that Brooklyn Center location comes in handy. If we just had this uh, large scale brewery, it'd be hard to come up with innovative new brands. Uh, but with a smaller brewery, we can try a lot of stuff, do some things, take a few more risks than we could on the large scale. Uh, and then in the beer hall, we can kind of trial some of those out, tweak them, uh, and make sure that we're sending uh, cool, interesting beers to market to, to compete with some of the smaller people that are doing stuff and also with uh, alternative beverages like seltzers and other brands out there that are growing in, in popularity. Yeah, cool. And what would you say is kind of the brew philosophy or what, what are some of the philosophies behind Surly Brewing? Uh, well, personally, I've uh, kind of a Venn diagram of um, unique but drinkable. Uh, we want to be somewhere in the middle. So we want to stand up, but we don't want to do it in a way that uh, you're going to get a beer and have a, a couple sips and then move it away. We want you to get a second beer. Uh, so we're really focusing on trying to capture that uh, essence of, of something that's a little bit different, a little left of center, not necessarily right on, on brand um, for like a pale ale, something that sets it apart, but still something you want to come back to and keep drinking. And I think we've done a great job with that from the beginning with brands like Furious, uh, which there really wasn't anything like, uh, to new brands like Grapefruit Supreme and Rosé that are here today. So what is the culture here? at Surly. The culture is great. I mean, it kind of goes back to when I started, there was just 20 some employees. Everyone wore a lot of hats and it was all about uh, kind of the experience of Surly. And that really kind of breeds into what we've done here at the Destination Brewery. If you look around, you see all these community tables. Um, there's not a lot of, of small four tops like we're sitting at. And it's really to bring people together. Uh, beer back in the day was about community, about coming together at the end of the day discussing you know, politics, sports, whatever it is, uh, and just being a part of that community. So uh, that's a big part of what we are, is, is kind of providing not just a space, but an experience to um, folks are probably familiar with Festival Field. We've got uh, shows every summer where we're bringing in you know, 6,000 folks for that. It's, you know, it's all about the experience, and then Surly's kind of the, uh, the tool there to bring people together. 
obviously the space is situated for more than just beer drinking and you guys have added a food element. So let's talk a little bit about that. Definitely, yeah. We have an awesome uh, culinary team here, a great hospitality team. And uh, we kind of put the same focus on food that we do with beer. We're starting with uh, great ingredients, um, working with local farmers uh, and, and doing most of the prep work in, in house. So we smoke a lot of meat, we have a lot of barbecue, our burgers are very popular. Uh, all the charcuterie here is done in house. We've got a guy that literally makes sausages every single day. Um, and upstairs we've got a pizza joint that's phenomenal. It's based on New Haven style pizza. So uh, whatever you're in the mood for, we've got something for everybody. We've got a great kids menu as well. And you've got a tremendous patio yes. out here and we're just about to enter into the it's, spring season. It's so close, we can feel it coming. Uh, <laughs> summer at the Surly Beer Garden is amazing. It's such a fun experience to come here uh, with your friends, your family, get a beer, maybe grab a pizza, sit out in the beer garden and just enjoy a Saturday afternoon. Maybe let's go and check out the actual drinks. Perfect. <laughs> Okay, so now we get to get into the real business of what the brewery is all about. But since we at The Hungry Minnesotan take drinking and driving very seriously, and I was our driver today, I brought in my designated drinker. She's the luckiest employee in the world. Yeah. I want that job. <laughs> <laughs> Best day ever. <laughs> so we were just talking about how just like with wine, and people know that wine tasting is a big thing, mm -hmm. you can do beer tasting too. You don't need to just sit it back and toss them down really quick. <laughs> Very much so. I mean, craft beer is all about flavor, um, so we're making kind of the anti-macro beer. Um, and we've got three really good um, representations of that today, for three very different beers that we're going to taste through. And as you're tasting beer, I mean, you don't have to do this, but uh, I like to first just look at it. Um, Furious is the first one. It's got a nice, clear uh, red uh, hue to it. Rocket Surgery is our hazy ale. It's hazy, that's good. Um, but it's got a nice glow to it. It doesn't have like a dull haze. Mm -hmm. And then Rosé uh, is our wine-inspired beer, and it's got a really nice kind of strawberry rosé color to the beer itself. Um, so, so that's generally the first thing. Aroma is always the next. People always say you, you taste with your nose more than your actual uh, uh, tongue. Um, so when you smell the beer, with Furious, you're gonna get some, some nice citrus notes from the hops. You also get like a mm -hmm. nice, light, mm -hmm. kind of caramely, malty flavor. Uh, Furious is an IPA, it's our flagship beer. This is the, our number one selling beer. Uh, and it's got a nice balance of malt to hops. So unlike most IPAs that are very much hop forward, there's not a lot of flavor from the malt, you're gonna get a little bit of both here. So it's uh, one of the reasons it's really popular. If you like malt forward beers, you're still probably gonna like Furious as an IPA. From there we go to flavor. So kind of take a smell and then take a sip. I always recommend taking one more. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> the first sip kind of introduces you to the beer, and the second one you kind of get the, the real flavor mm -hmm. of the beer. And again, it should follow kind of what you, you smelled in the beer. So again, yeah. you get kind of a, a nice malt backbone. You're gonna get some um, you know, light roasty notes, a little bit of a caramel and sweetness, mm -hmm. and then nice bitterness from the hops, but not over, overwhelming. Uh, and again, that kind of the grapefruit, citrus, um, orange flavor from the hops, yeah. and all that kind of blends together in that beer. Um, so again, this is the one that kind of pays the bills for us. Uh, it's gotten us to where we are 14 years later. The next beer we have is Rocket Surgery. This is a brand new beer for us. It, again, is a hazy beer. Hazies are kind of a big uh, thing in the IPA world, but we brought the ABV down, so this is a sessionable beer, 5.5%, mm -hmm. um, and tastes really nice. You're gonna get less bitterness than Furious. Uh, a little bit more kind of a candied oak flavor. We use a lot of oats in this beer, some adjuncts, uh, and then a nice citrus uh, punch. Um, so again, kind of smell. Mm. You know, less maltiness in this, less roastiness. I, it's okay, I went you're into ahead the of too. <laughs> Got too excited. <laughs> mm, the citrus is really good at that. Was just summery. Yeah. So this one. Yeah. It's nice, get a little more tropical fruit notes, like almost mm -hmm. mango. Papaya uh, differs a little bit from fear. It's gonna go overseas a little bit, get more of that tropical mm. fruit notes. Yeah. Um, and this is, a, this is a great beer. Again, very approachable, uh, not as intense as some of the bigger hazy IPAs you see other people making. Now, do you keep the mustache just so that you can, you know, keep a little bit of the You'll beer You'll save some for there. later. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And our third beer uh, is a beer that's very dear to my heart. I'm a big wine fan. 
Uh, also in the state of Minnesota, we're not allowed to serve wine, spirits, or anyone else's beer. But we have a lot of families, a lot of groups that come here that uh, folks might not be a beer fan. Uh, so we tried to create a beer that uh, folks that no, don't normally drink beer and maybe are more of a wine fan mm -hmm. uh, could appreciate. And being a big fan of, of wine, it was a fun challenge for me to kind of uh, approach a beer, kind of deconstruct uh, ingredients and rebuild something that can be wine-like. Uh, it's not going to taste just like a rosé, uh, but it's going to be very dry, very low on the malt uh, flavor. And we use just a kiss of strawberry. Uh, in the beer and a little bit of black currant to kind of give you that nice essence that you get in a rosé. Um, and this beer is a seasonal beer in package, but we generally have it in the beer hall year round. <laughs> so a nice effervescence, mm. again, very light, nice fruit uh, component, um, very easy to drink. Wow, really uh, good. Yeah. It's a nice beer. If you don't normally drink beer, I highly recommend maybe trying that next time you're in the beer hall. I have a question for you. So there's a difference between cans bottles and straight out of the tap. Can you kind Correct. of explain me why, you know, I notice that most of your beer, when you're buying it locally here, it's canned. And why is yeah. that? We're primarily a can uh, package brewery. It's what we started out years ago. And it really started because we're big fans of outdoors. Uh, Omar, our uh, owner is a big um, ultimate Frisbee fan, uh, likes to be out in the wilderness. And that's a lot of places you can't bring glass. Uh, it's easy to recycle, uh, recycle aluminum as well. Um, it's lighter, so it's easier to ship, and beer quality is also affected, so light can actually be detrimental to beer. So uh, if you've got uh, a light colored glass bottle and it's uh, sitting in the sunlight, it can change the flavor of sure. the beer. So by having no light allowed into the, into the can, it helps preserve that beer longer, makes it fresher, makes it better uh, for the consumer to drink. And you can put cool art on it. And it, it does also have a lot more real estate um, yeah. for artwork um, versus just a tiny label. We can use 100% uh, of that can, 360 degrees, uh, to market the brand, uh, both Surly and the individual uh, beer style. So what is your favorite beer? The one I'm drinking? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a good question. It changes quite a bit. Uh, Furious has kind of been my go-to since even before I worked at Surly. It's one of the reasons I wanted to work here because it was such a good beer and it was so different from anything else you can get in the Midwest. I tend to gravitate towards lower ABV though, so I can have a couple beers uh, and not have to worry about it. Uh, so Rocket Surgery's been been a great one. Uh, Hell or Hellas Lager, um, it's been around, it's one of, our, one of our first beers ever made, it continues to be one of my favorite beers. So, But it does change quite a bit, whether seasonally, like who I'm with, what I'm doing, um, kind of plays a role in, in what beer I want to have. So do you mind showing us the actual process of how you make these beers? Yeah, definitely. Let's go back to the brewery and take a look. All right, so we are in our brew house at Surly. Uh, we have a 100 barrel brew house. We have 600 barrel fermenters. So basically we're making 1,200 kegs of beer at a time, uh, which is a lot of beer. <laughs> Primarily Furious, Extra Citra, Hell, and then anything in a 12 uh, ounce can, like a variety pack or seasonal release. Uh, so we're gonna walk up the brew deck here and talk about how beer's uh, made uh, from, from grain. So we're on the brew deck. Uh, we're starting with uh, basically malted barley. Uh, that's gonna be our sugar source uh, for the yeast that make alcohol, basically. So we're crushing the, the malted barley and then we're mixing it with water, just happening as we speak. And at specific temperatures, enzymes that are already present in the malted barley are gonna break down those complex carbohydrates into simple sugars that yeast can eat. So we're getting it to a very specific temperature and just mixing it up and letting those enzymes do, do the magic. And then we're gonna separate uh, the wort from the grain and ferment it. How long does that take usually? Uh, this process takes about an hour to mix and then uh, it rests and then we move forward. Once we've got kind of that mixing happen, uh, we're gonna separate the wort from the grain then we need to boil that wort, that sugar water, uh, to sterilize it. We also add hops to add bitterness. Uh, so that's what's happening here in this kettle right now. Once we're done boiling the wort, uh, the sugar water, uh, we're gonna basically cool it back down, uh, put it to the fermenters, and then add yeast and let it do its thing. So we can walk into the cellar now and see the fermenters. Yeah, so this is a big heat exchanger. So this is what we're actually cooling the wort back down. So there's water on one side of it. There's all these like little plates in here. Uh, and on one side you have cold water, and the other side you have wort. So as it goes through here, it's basically cooling the, the wort down, uh, and then it heats the water up, and we actually recycle that water to use in the next brew. And once it's cool, uh, we can set it there, then add yeast. If you add yeast to it while it's still hot, yeast is a living organism, so it'll just kill it. 
Um, so now it's cool, we'll send it to the cellar through this pipe, so we're just gonna kind of follow that uh, into the cellar. All right, so now we're in the cellar. So we've pumped the word over from the brew house. Uh, we're gonna add yeast, and yeast is gonna break down and eat those sugars and basically create alcohol and CO2 are the two main byproducts. Uh, so let it do its thing about 10, 10 days or so. It'll ferment out. We may add some more hops at this stage called dry hopping. Beers like Furious and Rocket Surgery, that gave it kind of that aroma uh, of citrus and fruit that we got. Um, and then from here, we'll, we'll cool it down. Uh, we do centrifuge it, so we'll spin out the hops and yeast, um, and then basically send it to packaging to put it into cans uh, or kegs for consumers. Uh, so at this point, we're really kind of letting the yeast do its thing. Sure. Um, and, and, and our job is, is not done, but we can focus more on, on making more of the, the sugar water, uh, getting it ready for pack. And so the external parts of these machines are actually outside. They are, yeah. So most of them, if you drive into the, the brewery, you'll see the big tanks that almost look like silos yeah. uh, outside. So the majority of these are outside. Beer ferments at around 65 degrees for ales, uh, around 56 degrees if it's a lager. It takes a little bit longer. And then we chill them down to basically right around freezing. Uh, a little bit of alcohol helps the beer from freezing, so you can actually get it to about 30 degrees. Yeah. Uh, from there, we'll, we'll package it. So, uh, and normally, it's a struggle to get them that cold, especially in the summertime when it's, when it's 110. Clearly, we have our work cut out for us here. So, thank you for joining us, but we're gonna send you on your way so we can get down to business. <laughs>